Hello! Welcome to my channel. In this video I will explain how to interpret the protein's electrophoresis. I found on internet that a practical way to remember the curves of proteins is to use your hand so that each of your fingers is a category of proteins. The pinky constitutes the peak of albumin. Then we have alpha 1, alpha 2 and beta globulins and the inch is the gamma globulins. Within alpha 1 globulins there is serum amyloid A. Within alpha 2 the actoglobin, but also hemoglobin if there is hemolysis. Within beta globulins there are transferrin and complement C3, but also fibrinogen if you use plasma for the electrophoresis. So if you don't want that fibrinogen masks the curve of beta globulins, better to use serum. Now I'll show you some pathologic patterns. In case of an immediate response to inflammation, there is a decrease of albumin and an increase of alpha globulins. With a delayed response pattern, there can be also an increase of beta and gamma globulins. With chronic inflammation, there is hypoalbuminemia and marked hypergamma globulinemia, that's called polyclonal gammopathy. When only one portion of gamma globulins increases, for example in case of lymphoma, there can be a monoclonal gammopathy. If there are no gamma globulins in case of immunodeficiencies, there is no peak of gamma globulins and we speak of hypo or agamma globulinemia. In case of protein losing enteropathy, both albumin and gamma globulins decrease while alpha and or beta may increase depending on the chronicity of the inflammation. And that's all. If you want to watch more videos, subscribe to the channel. Bye!